Feels good to be back. starting uh, at the, the year off with a really exciting video and that's fine because I honestly think that the video today is something that a lot of people are actually wondering about so although this is not the most exciting video I'll be making this is definitely something that I know will answer a lot of questions you guys have about well Google's flagship smartphone the Nexus 6P so Nexus 6P came out back in September 2015 so this is almost three years ago at the time it was praised of being the top Android smartphone of 2015. It had an amazing display, great processor, incredible cameras, and most of all, a clean software experience, which at the time, and even to this day, is not offered on Android on pretty much any other device. In this video, I will discuss the following features. Design, performance, cameras, technologies, and experience, and how these features have held up over the last two and a half years or so. So hold on to your horses, we're gonna start with design. So the design of the Nexus 6P. First of all, shout out to C. Lee, you can check on his channel in the link in the description below, who basically supplied me with this Nexus 6P so I could literally review it and see how it stacks up in, 20, in 2018. So the Nexus 6P's design, although it is two, over two years old, in my opinion, it still holds up pretty well to this day. It's got an aeronautical grade aluminum build, and that still feels extremely premium today even against something like the iPhone X's glass design. However, there are some upsides to using aluminum as instead of glass because this will be more durable and a bit easier to hold. Plus, it's not really a fingerprint magnet, unlike glass. It's, I don't know if you've seen the iPhone X, it's, it's really bad. On the front of the phone is a 5.7 inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels, which is a full 1440p display. So this guy also has Corning Gorilla Glass 4, so it is pretty durable and can survive most of your falls. However, this particular unit that Celia has surprised me with can does show some of the uh, some of the cracks you can have here. But in other shots, I'll show that actually this doesn't affect your day-to-day -day usage interaction with this phone that much. Even by 2018 standards, it's a great build and a great display, and it has an amazing resolution. Even some flagships, <coughs> Apple, uh, don't offer full. 1440p displays on their smartphones. The display is a joy to look at and although it might not be something like the iPhone 10 or the Galaxy S8 or the Note 8, it's definitely still really good. And you have to remember, the 6P is two, over two years old. There are really no complaints about this display resolution here. The screen to body ratio, however, is one aspect of the phone that does not hold up to 2018 standards because we all know that the 2017 was the year of shrinking bezels and this guy has big bezels because back in 2015, people didn't really care that much. So this thing has like very blocky and chunky bezels, um, which make the phone look very dated. The screen to body ratio of the Nexus 6P is 71.4%, whereas on the, something like the iPhone 10, it is a 81.49% and this does make a noticeable difference. Yet having more bezel does provide some additional benefits such as the double flanking, forward facing speakers which sound amazing. Now granted the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 and other some other smartphones out there have good stereo speaker systems too, but it's nothing compared to having two dual facing stereo speakers that literally beam out towards you. Taking a look at the rest of the phone, you have your volume rocker and the power button on the right side of the phone. Turning it around, you have your uh, SIM card slot on the left side, 
and then on the bottom you have your USB-C connector and on the back you have your fingerprint sent scanner and the camera which I'll get into a little bit later plus the little Nexus and Huawei logos. I do just want to mention, I'll get into the cameras in a second, but I do want to mention that this is, this is only a single camera, single lens camera. But back then there were no dual lens cameras really on the market. So although the camera is great on this guy, you have to remember it's not going to be taking any kind of portrait shot or depth of field shots. So you're not going to have any of that blurred effect in the background or any other cool effects you might see on 2018, 2017 phones. Now let's talk performance. The Nexus 6P shipped with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor which for the time was, was the flagship processor of its, of, its, of its day. But even by 2018, it's by no means a dated processor. It's an octa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM running at a speed of around 2.2 gigahertz. By 2015 standards, those were top of the line specs. And by 2018 standards, it's still pretty decent. Using the phone in day-to-day -day usage bears little to no problems. And with the three gigabytes of RAM on board, Multitasking is easy and snappy. For gaming and other graphically intense activities like applications, the Adreno 430 GPU supports this phone. You may encounter the occasional glitch or bug, but you'll pretty much experience the same thing on any other 2018 or 2017 phone. And although the display refresh rate isn't something like 120 hertz or something crazy like that, the frame rates do keep up with you and the animations are still quite smooth to this day. Now let's talk cameras. So some people don't care too much about cameras, but some do, so I'll just briefly talk about the cameras for a bit on the sky. There are two cameras on the sky, a 12 megapixel rear facing camera and a eight megapixel front facing camera. The 12 megapixel on the back of the phone has an F 2.0 aperture and is able to capture 4K video and HDR, which for the time was not offered on anything other than the premium smartphones. The eight megapixel camera on the front of the phone has an F 2.4 aperture and captures 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Again, even by 2018 standards, it's really not bad at all. Overall, the cameras are obviously fine. It's nothing spectacular anymore, even though it was, it was praised in 2015. It now has a decent camera and has no place among the higher end 2017 uh, flagships such as the Galaxy Note 8 or the iPhone 10. but it still takes amazing shots. And honestly, I'm actually impressed by some of the shots. I'll show you some of the shots taken on the Nexus 6P right now. Plus, the lack of a dual lens camera pre prevents you, like I said before, from taking any depth of field camera shots and the lack of OVS and OIS is noticeable sometimes when you're taking certain shots while moving. Plus, with Android, all your camera settings are controllable within the app itself and that is a handy little nitpick. No, a handy little thing, yeah. Now let's move on to technologies. So the Nexus 6P comes packed with plenty of 2015 flagship technologies. It ships with Bluetooth 4.2, Wi-Fi, 802.11 standard, GPS, NFC, and USB-C. It's capable of fast charging, but not wireless charging due to its aluminum design. Even though even Google's current flagship of 2017 doesn't support wireless charging either, which is a shame. The fingerprint sensor is lightning quick. And even though the technology is two years old, the fingerprint sensor works almost just as fast as any modern day sensor. The only two technologies it's really missing in 2017 and or slash 2018 is facial recognition and a dedicated virtual assistant. So Samsung's Iris face scanners and Apple's face ID work super well and are getting a lot of popularity these days and Bixby and Siri continue to be updated for the phones. The Nexus 6P however has a fingerprint sa scanner instead which some people prefer over face recognition and it doesn't have Google Assistant. However, these missing technologies are pretty minor in my, in my opinion, and honestly, it's not like you need it. The experience. When the Nexus 6P was originally conceived, it was meant to provide a premium experience that was only offered by other very high-end expensive smartphones. However, gradually through the years, uh, cheaper budget smartphones became more powerful, and the differences between a budget smartphone and a premium smartphone are becoming more ambiguous these days. Does the Nexus 6P still offer that premium experience initially set out to provide in 2018? No. What the Nexus 6P offers now are sort of what, what other mid-ranger options in 2018, 2017 offer. Uh, the mid-ranger offers big bezel, slower processor, and lack of 2018 technologies are what mainly differentiate the Nexus 6P from other high-end options such as the Galaxy Note 8 and the iPhone 10. However, the main reason the Nexus 6P is better than other Android smartphones 
is because it still offers stock Android, which is a version of Android that doesn't come with pre-installed software like other smartphones. It's Android in its purest form, and that's the reason many people liked Nexus. So the conclusion, should you buy the Nexus 6P two, over two years after it was released? Well, it depends on what kind of consumer you are. If you're an average consumer who will use your phone for everyday web browsing, email, social media, and gaming, the Nexus 6P is a great option for you. If you are a business professional who needs more raw power and multitasking capabilities than, than needed by the average consumer, consider the iPhone 10 or the Samsung Galaxy S8 or Note 8. And in case you're wondering about the variants, I will tell you right now so you don't have to go to the website and do it, though I will leave a link in the description below in case you want to see it with your very own eyes. Pretty much it comes in gold, silver, graphite, and frost colors. The base model is 32 gigabytes of internal storage, non-expandable, and it starts at $234. The mid-tier model comes at 64 gigabytes and is $245, and the top model is 128 gigabytes and is $345. You can buy the Nexus 6P if you're interested and if you're an average consumer in the link in the description below. And here's a list if, in case you really wanted like a full recap of all the pros of using the Nexus 6P in 2018. There's a premium aluminum design, a well-sized crisp display, coin and gorilla glass 4, it's very durable, double front-facing stereo speakers, a fast fingerprint sensor, well-balanced performance and graphics, decent camera, essential technology such as Bluetooth 4.2, Wi-Fi 802.11ac, NFC, and etc. Fast charging and a stock Android experience. Now here is a list of all the cons using the Nexus 6P in 2018. There are big bezels, an outdated processor and graphics chip, no, no dual lens camera, no OV OVS or OIS, no updates after Android Oreo 8.0, no facial recognition technology, no wireless charging, and no dedicated virtual assistant. Although you do have Google now and Google Assistant, so. Forget I said the thing about virtual system. I was unfortunately not able to get my hands on the Note 8 for a review, so check out a very helpful review from another tech reviewer by clicking that box right there. You can check out my card right here about the Galaxy S8 and whether you should still buy that phone or not. If you wanna check out some other Google products, you can click this video right here and watch all my videos on video reviews on Google products. And if you wanna see what was on my Android last year, you can check this video out right here. I made a whole video on how I organize my Android experience. You can subscribe to, to my channel if you really like my videos up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check the link description below, and as always, I will see you in the next video.